Welcome to Feed That Matters. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And I'm Dan Barker. Annie Laurie and I are co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces this weekly TV show. To acquaint the public with the views of non-believers and secularists, who are today a quarter of the U.S. population. And the Freedom From Religion Foundation is the nation's largest association of freethinkers, atheists and agnostics, and FFRF works diligently as a state church watchdog to protect the constitutional principle of separation between state and church. And we invite you to join us today or ask for information and a complimentary copy of our newspaper, Free Thought Today, by visiting ffrf.org. Many beloved composers, such as Brahms and Scott Joplin, were not religious, as well as many popular musicians and songwriters, both historic and contemporary. We're excited to have with us today two such stellar jazz musicians, Tahira Clayton and Addison Fry. Addison Fry is a well-known jazz pianist and composer. His many albums include Future Speak, Transit, and Intentions, and Amp Trios to be Determined, and My Your World. He recently completed his artist diploma at the Juilliard School. Addison celebrated his latest album, No Defense, on TCB Records, with performances at the Monterey Jazz Festival, the Montreux Jazz Festival, Alhambra in Geneva, and Lucerne Piano Festival. Fry is a proud Yamaha artist. He's been a favorite accompanist of many vocalists, including Leslie Odom Jr., Renee Elise Goldsberry, Janice Siegel, and Carol Fredette. And he has been an especially favorite accompanist for the jazz singer Tahira Clayton, who is also with us today. Tahira Clayton is an internationally known award-winning jazz vocalist. She's performed at Sony Music Hall, Tribeca Performing Arts Center, and many other venues. She's a founding board member of Women in Jazz, uh, and she has traveled internationally to present her research on the dangers of jazz sexism in society. Tahira is an educator who holds teaching art positions at the Brooklyn Conservatory of Music, the Bloomingdale School of Music, and Trinity Wall Street. Her debut album, Wait Till Now, came out last year. Addison and Tahira, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Pleasure to be here. So first of all, congratulations are in order. You've been working together for like eight years, is it? But now, yeah, right. but now you are married. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we tied the knot in November, and uh, then we went into a time accelerator known yes. as uh, newlyweds in quarantine, and we're celebrating our uh, 15th anniversary, actually, uh, next week, I think. 15th. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's, that's... It's, it, we, we've gotten to spend a lot of time together making, making music and uh, enjoying, uh, enjoying our newlywed status. Yeah, so... and we still like each other, too, <laughs> which I think is a, a pretty big accomplishment for quarantine. <laughs> So the two of you have frequently performed together at New York venues such as Dizzy's, the Kitano, the Django, New Blue, the 55 Bar, and you've also performed on the road, the DC Jazz Festival, the Jazz Showcase, the Velvet Note, and Dazzle, among many others. You guys have been really, really busy. So, <laughs> so how has that pandemic affected your musical performances. You're not going out and gigging much these days, are you? No, not very much. We've uh, had to become masters of video craft, actually. A lot of our performances, which we're still doing some, um, are all online now. So we are professional lighting people, audio people, and have just sort of converted our living space into an acting studio, which, mm -hmm. you know, it works. It, it's good for the time being. It's giving us time to create though. It's it's sort of a luxury of being an artist um, mm -hmm. that we're, we're often used to dealing with blocks of time and, and trying to sculpt our, our creations and, and put our own structure into place. So mm -hmm. this is kind of a, a large scale ex experiment in that respect for, for us to 
to keep creating and stay active amidst the limitations. Yeah. Well, I see the piano behind you. There's a Yamaha piano. Right? You're a uh, Yamaha artist. So. That's right. I've been with them for a few years. So you need to separate once in a while so we can see the word Yamaha on the... There you go. There's a <laughs> Yamaha. <laughs> so Addison, um, we've known you for a long time. That's one of the reasons why we invited you on the show. Since you were really little, your family has been members of the Freedom From Religion Foundation for, I don't know, 20 years? or Over, uh, Yeah, probably just, just shy of 20 years, yeah. Back when you were just a little kid. Mm -hmm. and, and you started performing professionally at age 10, is that right? That's right. And oddly enough, it was growing up in a non-religious household. Uh, my, my Sunday mornings were free, so I actually uh, scooped up a brunch gig. Um, I, was, I was playing at some local restaurants on Sunday mornings. And it's funny that actually the, the Sunday ritual with music uh, really was a big part of my, my youth. In, in middle school and high school, I played in a community big band that met every Sunday as well. So uh, those, those were kind of meaningful community experiences that that definitely put me on the path towards towards uh, being a professional musician. Well, doesn't Fry mean free? That's true. Your last true. name? So you were and free? That's on, right. Free on Sundays. So we mm -hmm. actually, one of those community experiences you had is where we met you <clears throat> at our Alabama chapter's Lake Hypatia Free Thought Retreat. They said it was a Free Thought mm -hmm. Advance. When we met you, you were a young teenager, and it was uh, your mother I uh, had quite a story. Um, I was invited by some... M Morgan Spurlock Mo had a Morgan show. Morgan Spurlock had a show, and he wanted to know if I, as an atheist leader, would go down and live with a fundamentalist family for a month. <laughs> and I said, no, but I'd be glad to send an email out to our members and see if someone else volunteers. Well, guess who volunteered? That's right. My mom jumped at, jumped at the chance. I think for her... Um, oh, we get to see some of this footage. Uh, for her, it was a great chance to try to work to dispel stereotypes. Um, you know, it's, it's, as, as a young person, it's hard to imagine how much uh, society's attitudes and prejudices uh, can, can change in just a short amount of time. And just to think back 15 years ago, to, it was uh, probably all the more kind of a, a boogeyman foreign thing to, to be an atheist in, in popular culture and popular media. So. Um, she she worked really hard to to try to represent the community, but also just show that that atheists can have a family that's that's connected and and rooted in family values. So that was a, a little ex experience of her visiting her host family's church, which uh, we got a chance to see them. As and you well, can so. watch that whole thing. It's online under Thirty Days by Morgan Spurlock. That mm -hmm. was August of. 2006, if I remember correctly. And I think your mother, this was in Texas, and to hear you were telling me before the show that you actually lived very close to where this was happening. Right down the street. I actually know that church that they, <laughs> um, that they were visiting. Huh. So what is your family's background? Um, I grew up extremely religious, uh, and that's partly because of black culture in itself. The church is very much so centered um, around religion. Um, I grew up singing in the church choir. I joke that I was in church more than I was anywhere else. You know, both of my parents served in our church uh, like six out of the seven days of the week. I think wow. our only day off was on, on Mondays. Um, so yeah, a very um, religious background in the way that I was always in church um, very different than a fundamentalist background, which, you know, has very strict sort of rules. I didn't grow up necessarily with, you know, not being able to wear pants in church or not being able to wear lip color or anything like that. But it, it definitely was um, a faith-led home uh, that I, I questioned from a really, really young, young age. I joke with Addison often that Harry Potter is actually, you know, my entrance into the realm of free thought. I was maybe seven years old when I was reading the first Harry Potter book, and I was in church waiting for my mom to finish Bible study. And the choir director at the time took away my book and told me that, you know, I was being a very bad girl for re reading about witchcraft and that God didn't condone these sorts of things. And my thought was like, how could God not love Harry Potter? He's had such a hard life. This is, it was really like, you know, kind of hard for me to 
even wrap my head around, but that was around the first time when I started maybe thinking uh, that everything, the structure that I had grown up in might not be um, what I believed. So thanks, Harry Potter, I guess. <laughs> So why don't we hear some music right now? You guys have that Yamaha piano behind you. Um, I saw a performance you did online uh, of a Gershwin tune. Uh, can you perform something for us right now? You got it. Let's do it. Yeah. What's the tune? This is They Can't Take That Away From Me by George Gershwin. So Addison Fry and Tahira Clayton performing They Can't Take That Away From Me. That was fun. That was wonderful. You guys have a real relationship there in so many different ways. And they can never take that away from you. This is, <laughs> this is you. Addison Fry, the pianist, and Tahira Clayton, the vocalist. And we're going to have to take a break now. You guys can hold on, I assume. And we want to talk about and, and actually hear some of your socially conscious music that you've been working on the last few years. So after the break, we're going to hear... The song Future Speak, which deals with Black Lives Matter and, and violence and peace and all of that. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more Free Thought Matters. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist, and I'm alarmed by the intrusions of religion into our secular government. That's why I'm asking you to support the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics, working to keep state and church separate, just like our founding fathers intended. Please support the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. And we're back with pianist Addison Fry and vocalist Tahira Clayton and a uh, very talented couple not only producing beautiful music but also doing good things in the world by the way how did you two guys meet I bet it was some kind of a musical thing 
That is yeah. correct. We were we were classmates together, in fact, uh, at the University mm -hmm. of North Texas, uh, down the road from Tahira's, Tahira's home in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And uh, it's, a, it's a great music program, a, a large community, and we really uh, threw ourselves into it and started making, making music and building relationships that are, that are carrying on to this day. So Tahira, you have traveled and talked about the dangers of jazz sexism in society. What does that mean? Yeah, this is sort of an, an overarching theme uh, in the aftermath of Me Too. Um, Hollywood sort of got their heyday and academic institutions were getting their heyday. But being a woman in jazz, I felt that there was a huge danger, which is sexism, that wasn't necessarily being addressed or researched in a thorough way. Um, so why not add researcher to the, the titles that I have? Um, and I started just um, talking to different women and sort of learning about their experiences. And I learned very quickly that there were several common denominators um, between each woman's experience whether they're the only woman on the bandstand or the only woman in their collegiate jazz program. Um, just these, these things that seem to be very uh, benign, but when put into a larger context are actually quite dangerous. So I uh, created a survey and sent it out to women across the world and got a lot of response and uh, sort of trying to grab uh, qualitative data and quantitative data of women's experiences um, in the jazz community. And from there, I wrote a 20 page research paper that um, is set to be published uh, next year. And just sort of talking about the idea of women in jazz needing to not only talk about these dangers, but to also address them in a larger context to continue creating uh, a fruitful and enriching environment for women to continue uh, being contributors to the art form. I think you're right. I play in some big bands once in a while, 18-piece big bands, and uh, of course they bring in the girl singer, you know, but it's mostly guys. Once in a while there might be a female saxophonist in it, but it's mostly just men that are, I guess, groomed for this kind of a thing. But I always kind of thought, and maybe Addison, you would agree or disagree, I always kind of thought jazz was like the great equalizer. It, it, your talent is what matters, right? I mean, you, you see black singers, you see female, you see in, hist in the history of jazz, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like race or religion or ethnicity should really matter at all. Well, that's a, definitely a, a noble ideal. Um, unfortunately, we, we are, are, are led astray from that path, both in history and in, in modern time, and, and to hear his work and the work of the Women in Jazz organization is, is doing what they can to remedy that. So much of it is about uh, the early educational level and representation. And while some of these numbers are growing and encouraging as far as involving more more women um, in, is, and as instrumentalists as well, they're by no means to, to where we want them to be. Um, and certainly looking back in history, both um, you know the immense amount of racial prejudice that led to black artists being denied the ability to work or, or um, being dismissed by white critics and you know hurting their record sales, the record industry. There's no shortage of these things. So while we we dream of the the sacred in in the bandstand and and what you speak of, um, unfortunately in in music this is like you know any other any other profession where we face these these ills. But we do see like Thelonious Monk on Time Magazine, and we see Duke Ellington and Miles Davis. Well, I those mean, are men, Dan. <laughs> yeah, those are men. Well, so, okay. yeah. That's a great point. Um, those, you know, we touted those artists. In fact, the government uh, sponsored jazz artists, uh, it, the State Department, to send them uh, around Eastern Europe during the Cold War as ambassadors for America. And this was one of the first times that Louis Armstrong, when he was asked by the press in Europe, actually uh, spoke out about his frustrations with his treatment back home. So. Um, in, in championing these artists, sometimes we, we lose sight of how they may have, in fact, been neglected, too, in, in other aspects of our society. But Yeah, I think it speaks to a larger issue that we even see today of the idea that, you know, we'll put women, women in the forefront or we'll even put black artists in the forefront. Um, but it's really in a more tokenizing sort of position to say, we're, we're doing this. We, we have diversity. But... The mistreatment, I think, that Addison is talking about, the mistreatment back home, sort of almost it 
takes away that equalizing effect of, of seeing those poster children, per se. So the Women in Jazz organization, did you found it or co-found it? Um, I didn't found it. It was founded by um, Roxy Koss, who is a phenomenal uh, saxophone player. But uh, I attended one of the first meetings and, and really appreciated what was going on. Um, I also uh, knew that myself being a black woman specifically, I wanted to make sure that I was on the ground floor of creating equal opportunity for all women and non-binary people. So um, when a leadership position was offered to me um, pretty shortly after it was founded, I took it immediately and we've been together for about three years mm. now. I'm acting as the vice president. Mm. Um, and we're moving to get our nonprofit status and have several programs that are running now um, with the goal of creating um, more opportunity for women musicians, but also uh, creating resources for women to work through maybe some of the things that they've experienced as women on the jazz scene. So people can find out on your website, tahiraclayton.com, is that right? And then there's an addisonfry.com. In 30 mm -hmm. seconds, can you tell us about Future Speak? We, we want to have time to play the whole thing. So what is Future Speak? So Future Speak was a, was a digital album and a music video for the title track. Um, and I wanted the song to reflect the idea that um, society is progressing, hopefully that it's a light for hope in that uh, in the future, these more progressive voices, enlightened voices, will, will win out, that young people will push us forward. And um, it's a, a little moment of hope that hopefully we can lean on when we're faced with the constant onslaught of, of those that feel that are acting against progress in our society. Wow, so jazz musicians with a heart and with a vision. We will watch that song as we go out of today's show. Thank you, Addison and Tahira, for being with us today. And thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because free thought matters. to value thought before it's too late or let the pulpit guide us into thinking we are great great wait they're praying on hate ordained by so-called faith so we retaliate against a tv station that's feeding the nation on the sensation of savior adulation spitting on education preaching the promise of eternal life but love from above turned a blind out of strife but we got fighters and a great in institutions Believing in inclusion Rejecting the illusion of a foreign intrusion Shining light amidst confusion And giving this nation a new blood transfusion Ha! We're resolute, anchored by firm roots Facing 
in a tech we can't compute Cause we speak a different language In a world that's filled with fear Calibrate to communicate Cause Future Speak is here Hi, I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason.